So we need some storage and I know just the guy to create it. I'm actually gonna look around the shop and see what I have here. And I believe I have enough plywood to create one of these cool wardrobes that can be a multi-purpose thing. Know it's gonna work for me, hopefully it'll work for you guys as well. But before we get into that, quick word from today's sponsor, Bombfells, an easier way for men to shop for great looking clothes. I like new clothes, but I don't really like shopping, especially in stores. I'm all about convenience, but too many times I go in the store and I ended up picking up more than I actually went there for. Or I find myself going from store to store to try to find the right style. Now Bombfells actually solves all those problems. First you go to their website, link in description. Then you fill out a simple questionnaire and that's enough information for them to pair you up with the right stylist. After signing up, you put in all your measurements. Then you're on to your order instruction like, what you want and when you want it. 48 hours later, you then get an email to confirm what was picked for you. If you don't like it, just request a change. And seven days after receiving your item, you get to keep it or return it. And it's really simple. So the more you keep, the more you get to save. And living in that Florida weather, this just makes a lot of sense. It's very comfortable and I really like the feel of the material. It's been a smooth process. And on top of that, there's a special offer just for you. Get $25 off your first purchase by going to bombsville.com slash DIY creators. To find out more on this project, be sure to check the link down in the video description for the written article. Let's get started. I begin by cutting the plywood down to a manageable size. A track saw is a really good option here, but I like to use what I already have. A circular saw and a rip cut jig works really well. And after that, it's on to ripping down the side of the wardrobe. Since I modeled things out before heading in the shop, it really sped this part up, allowing me to focus on making the cuts as accurate as possible. To make the drawers, I needed to make a quick jig that would allow me to adjust the saw blade so I can make accurate rabbit cuts. The goal for the jig is to transfer my practice session over to the final piece. Since I'm in the middle of these cuts, I find it easier to use a table saw rather than setting up a dado stack. With the drawers being cut to the final dimension, it was on to making a slot for the drawer bottom. The middle divider had me spinning my wheels for a while because I was trying to think about the best way to go about this. I went for the dado joint here. This may have cost me more time up front, but this will end up being an easier join during the glue up and a little less alignment headaches. You could use a pocket hole jig for the connection here and just plug the hole or just use screws from the top and bottom shelf and plug those as well. To be more efficient here, I marked all the parts and took care of the prep work like drilling the location for the pocket hole screws prior to assembling. I tend to forget about these clamp it jigs all the time. They're a huge helping hand, allowing me to hold things square while I focus on adding the screws. Now that I have a frame, I'm going to add the bottom shell for the drawer enclosure. In this case, I have a model that I'm using as a guide. The distance from the bottom depends on the clearance you need for the shoes. Placing the first shelf 7 inch from the bottom should be enough clearance for most of the shoes we have. So feel free to space this as you please. To add the top part for the drawer enclosure, you'll want to locate the piece of plywood that has the dado running through it, or unless you skip the dado part. Unlike the first piece I added, this piece is a little more crucial, when it comes to spacing of course. The drawer cover need to fit within the opening and have identical spacing going around it. In this case, the side top and bottom all have an eighth inch of gap going around the entire cover. But be sure the dado joint is facing up. 
and at this point you can use the middle divider to set the spacing for the top shelf. I added glue to the joint then worked the divider into its place. Making this connection could have been done prior but since I have such a tight fit it was easier for me to just work this into place. And with this being done it was on to adding the back. While I was doing all of the cutting, I also made provision for the plywood backing. By making rapid cuts on the inside of the side panel, it allowed the plywood to sit down into it. This gives a cleaner look when looking at the wardrobe from the side and not having to see the plywood ends. I apply wood glue on the surface of where the plywood will sit. Then I added a few brad nails at the top and bottom to hold things in place and finally I add clamps and I place weight in the location where I couldn't necessarily place a clamp. For the shelves I kept it to a minimal. I made a rabbit joint on the trim that sits in front of the plywood. You can totally do this with the router but since I'm really close to the table saw I just took multiple passes until I cleaned this up. And all I have to do now is apply wood glue to this simple two part shelf. And after joining the two parts together, you'll just add a clamp and let that sit until the glue set up. One thing I'm picking up on here is doing a lot of the prep work in the beginning allowed the assembly process to be a whole lot easier. This is my first time making drawers this way and it really made me want to explore different options in the future. After gluing up all the joints, all I had to do at this point is fight to keep everything square. A band clamp is gold for this kind of clamping. This get everything very close but it's always best to whip out the tape measure and check the diagonal measurements. If the measurements are equal then everything is all squared. And you can add additional clamps to hold everything while the glue set up. If you happen to have a source nearby, you can possibly build this wardrobe with nicer wood. I'm using birch plywood because this is what's available in my area. And of course, using plywood, there's a great chance you'll have exposed ends, showing off those beautiful layers. The layers are cool, but I don't really want to see all these lines, so I'm going to cover them up using an iron-on edge band. Edge band come in many different flavors as well, so I'm using a birch plywood and I'm also going to use a birch edge band. This was a bit of a process to go around and cover all the visible ends. The edge band come in 25 foot rolls, so I only needed two packs of these for this entire project. And to tidy up this build, I used 3 8 dowels to cover all the pocket holes. And with these in place, I can now shift the focus to sanding. After determining the spacing for the shelf, I took a scrap piece of wood and I used that for spacing. The two shelves at the top are 12 inches apart and the one at the bottom is about 9 inches from the bottom. The shelves that was previously made will just be placed on these support. They won't be glued or anything. So if down the road you need to make an adjustment, you could just pop these supports off and adjust it to your liking. And with sanding being a thing of the past, it's time to put on some finish. The plan is to lean towards a two-tone look. I could have easily left that at one color, but for me, I wanted something that looked a little more than a big pile of wood that was organized carefully. And with that in mind, I taped off the areas that I didn't want to get paint on. Then I proceeded to add white paint in the areas that fit the look that I was going for. I ended up doing this back area where the closed section is, and I also did the drawer cover. I ended up being disappointed because I bought some stain 
Not necessarily looking at the name, but rather looking at the color on the can. In all of my stain buying days, I've never picked up a can that the color was so visually different from what's in the can to what's on the cover. And it was really getting late at night, so I had to switch up the plan and just go away from the color that I initially wanted to use. A couple of the sheets were from different hardware store. One brand of the birch plow would have the same layer on both sides, so they were the same shade. And the other one has two different tones on it. So when I put the clear coat on it, certain areas got darker than others. But since it's going in a closet, I'll look past it. And at this point, I'm getting super excited because it's almost done. All I need to do now is install the hardware which includes the drawer slides, the pull handle, and the clothes rod. After installing the drawer slides, it was on to installing the drawer itself. As a way to attach the drawer cover, I placed a few coins down to act as spacers. Then I added a few strips of hot glue onto the front of the drawer and attached the cover. I carefully pulled the drawer out, then I secured the drawer to the door cover. And finally, I pre-drew the holes to add the pull handle. And although I've dressed this up with my belongings, I actually made this for my little daughter. It gives us a little more space to put some of her growing inventory. I also made this with you in mind, hoping that this can also solve some of your space issues. And if you head over to the website DIYcreators.com, you can find a written version of this to guide you through step by step to be your very own. If you know anyone that can use this, be sure to share it with them. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. And if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm Glenn with DIY Creators and I'll catch you in the next one.